Welcome back to Knit Together with Kim and Jana. I'm Kim. And I'm Jana. And we are back here at Pick Up Every Stitch, our local yarn shop. And uh, we're so grateful to Karen and Felicia. Yep. We um, just count our blessings every day that we, we get to shop here, first of all, but also do our channel here. And we do other events mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm. Just Saturday, we did... Um, oh, the Vogue Knitting Live interview. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was fun. I had to sort of pinch myself. Yeah, we didn't really talk about it on <laughs> the channel. I felt like we were in such illustrious company, you know? Yeah. I was worried it wouldn't really happen, so we didn't talk about it in any of our videos. Mm -hmm. We posted on social media, but mm -hmm. <clears throat> basically, Karen and Felicia were in Italy for the Mayak retreat, and they met Nara. Um, I have her name. I, oh, I, yeah, I only wrote her first names down, mm -hmm. I think. Um, and she's a fiber journalist, and... She, she actually, what was really funny is they were in the airport and Nara recognized them from our channel. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, you didn't know that? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. But and they were all going to the same place. They were, okay. but they didn't. They were so just they would randomly. have met eventually, but she recognized them. Yes. Funny. Um, and then I guess the topic of this, or the idea for this Vogue Knitting Live, um, it's one of the marketplace extras. Mm -hmm. They just had a, a weekend, a virtual weekend. Mm -hmm. And when you sign up for the whole event, at least a class or the marketplace, then you can, um, you know, you can do these marketplace extras, mm -hmm. which are interviews and other videos. Mm -hmm. And so the idea of this podcaster panel came up. And so there were four different podcasts. It was ours. We were from the U.S. And it was Marie Castro mm -hmm. from Brazil. Mm -hmm. Uh, by the way, as I say these, you should jot it down, or we'll put it in the show notes. You should follow all of them. They're amazing. Uh, Marie does hers in, in Portuguese. Felipa and Liliana are also from Portugal, so they do theirs in Portuguese. Mm -hmm. And um, Soraya is originally from Spain. Is she the one who lives now? in uh, Amsterdam or, Amsterdam or something. And so she does hers in Spanish. And what's so interesting is they said that what they they love about doing their podcast is doing things that are in their native language because mm -hmm. there's so many YouTube channels mm -hmm. and podcasts in English. Mm -hmm. But but to really support their native speakers, they do their their podcast in Spanish and Portuguese, which right. is great. Mm -hmm. And they they put us to shame as far as their entrepreneurship entrepreneurialship and it's their full-time job though they're designers they're mm -hmm. um they're teachers mm -hmm. podcasters so they have full schedules yeah they some of them have created their own yarns correct mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but they're just these amazing women yeah so definitely look them up follow them did you see that whole sweater marie castro was wearing yes oh, crochet she does a lot of crochet <laughs> a lot of crochet tutorials. if i was ever gonna wear a crocheted garment my goodness yes. it was stunning that was amazing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that already happened, though, so you can't watch it. Sorry. Well, and another thing that um, Philippa and Liliana mentioned is that um, Portuguese knitters knit in a different style than right. we do. So it was, you know, they said it was so important for them to be able to teach and talk about Portuguese knitting. Right, and do tutorials. Is, yeah, neither continental mm -hmm. nor... Because um, I've even noticed, for English me, style. the way I knit continental... If I'm learning a new skill, I like to find a video mm -hmm. where they knit the same way I do because mm -hmm. Jana knits Continental slightly differently. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there's English style. And so I know how hard it is just for me to find one that I can kind of relate to with mm -hmm. my Continental style. Um, but to be able to find, you know, Portuguese knitting in Portuguese, that's mm -hmm. just great. So mm -hmm. they're just doing great thing for the yeah. knitting world. I mean, it's just amazing. So we were very blessed to be able to participate in that. Mm -hmm. And it was so nice to meet all of them. Hi, ladies, if you're watching. <laughs> um, but then it was so funny because the next day, that well, that was Saturday, the next day out of the blue, I just decided to sign up for a couple of classes oh, for Vogue okay. Knitting Live. Mm -hmm. And so I signed up for um, Blocking and Caring for Your Knitwear with Shana Bilo and Introduction to Antarja with Kyle Kuneki. Mm -hmm. And so it's so funny um, even if I could just get a few little nuggets, I picked classes where there was no homework. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I, I just did it so last minute. Moment, right? yeah. So with the blocking, did you know you can block pom-poms? Did I tell you this? Oh, or not you mean block, but... Handmade? 
Not she fur steams. Ones. She steams handmade and even fur ones. She says wow. if you steam them with a, she uses one of those like clothing steamers you would mm-hmm. see in a store. Mm. If you steam it, it opens up the fiber so it doesn't look stringy anymore, mm. like a yarn pom pom. Mm-hmm. It actually looks like a like a puff ball, like you would see. Mm-hmm. And then the same thing with these. Well, I noticed when I was looking at them, um, Emily, one of the women who works here, she was shaking them vigorously like this to fluff them up because obviously they come in plastic bags and they're probably all smushed together. Yeah. So, yeah. So you should try. She said it works for for, um, oh, for fur. fur and faux fur as well. Oh, okay. So try steaming them. So that was one main thing cool. I learned from her that was really interesting. I learned a lot more. And then with the introduction to Intarsia, you know, I'm doing that Amina sweater. Mm-hmm. And I just wanted to watch it because I kind of, kind of taught myself. I hadn't really taken a class in it. And so... I, I don't know. I just was wanted to see if there's something new I could learn or, mm-hmm. you know, anyway, it was really good. He is a great okay. teacher too. Both of them were really great. So good. that was fun. Um, what else? Oh, do you want to announce the ask us anything winner? Oh yeah. So in episode, so this is episode 13 and in episode 12, we, to celebrate our one year anniversary, we asked people to comment below that video and ask us a question, ask us anything. Mm -hmm. So there were 205 comments or questions. Comments or questions. And I use a random number generator and drew number 156. And Sarah Brandt, you are the winner. So yeah, the winner of some Kim and Jonna merchandise. And honestly, knowing us, we'll probably throw in some extra little goodies. We always do. We always do. (laughs) So um, it's fun for us. So email us at KTOG with Kim and Jonna at gmail.com. KTOGW. Kim and Jonna, it's below. Everything's in the show notes. You can fast forward through all the blather in the beginning. Um, I put a timestamp for works in progress and finished objects and acquisitions and anything else we talk about is in the show notes below. Mm-hmm. So don't listen to me. Look at the show notes and email us. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations, Sarah. We're so excited yeah. that you won. And thank you, everybody. It was who a really commented. sweet question, too, by the way. And then we're going to film an episode and we're going to answer a lot of the questions. Um, we can categorize and kind of cover a bunch of questions at once. Mm-hmm. So I think we'll be able to get through a, a lot of questions. Yeah. It'll be yeah. really fun. Yeah. And that'll be a video where we can just knit the whole time and answer right. the questions. That'll right. Be really we won't fun. be talking about what we're making. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah. So that's cool. Um, let's see. I think the other stuff we'll talk about at the end. Let's get right okay. into the knitting. How's that okay. sound? How does that sound, Jonna? Oh, Pearl loves the smell of the farm yarn. <laughs> hey, Pearl, sweetheart, you cannot have that. I know that smells like Pearl's a... That smells like a friend. <laughs> but it's not. in <laughs> bag. You're so clean. You got your hair done. Me too. She did. Yeah, She's I got so like cute. three inches cut off my hair. <laughs> yeah, you got a haircut. So cute. And you're all clean. Yeah. Okay, but go away from the sheep. <laughs> go away from okay, the sheepy bye. wool. <laughs> all righty. Do you want to talk about what you're wearing? Uh, you sure. Yeah. Um, I am wearing my renun- one of my many ranunculi from Adori Hirose. It's my my newest one. Yeah. I knit this last year out of Monosteel Uruguay Silk Blend, which is a DK weight silk and merino blend, single ply. And I knit this on a size, I want to say size eight needle. So it's a DK. And I knit the size two from the new pattern, which is the one size from the old pattern. Mm -hmm. And I followed it pretty much Maybe this is the first time I've actually followed the pattern, actually. The, the <laughs> you did the time. actual cast on? I, I did the actual cast on. I did the three-quarter length sleeves, and I did the short rows. With the I-cord? I did the I-cord. It's a little pilly. Um, you didn't I, do the slant, though. Oh, you I did. did do the slant. I did. Mm-hmm. I did do the... I, like, actually followed... I thought maybe for my ninth or tenth one, I would actually follow the pattern. <laughs> so that's what I did. Nice. Yeah. Except probably the only modification I made is... Oh, does that look like more than... Four inches? Yes. Okay, so I probably add a little bit of length because I don't like to show my belly. <laughs> so, yeah. It's beautiful. That's my, what I'm wearing. Nice. How about you? So, you, we are wearing a finished object. I am. I'm wearing a finished <laughs> object. So, this is obviously my tweed tee that I've been working on. Um, the design is by Karen here at um, Pick Up Every Stitch mm-hmm. on Instagram. She's Custom Stitches by Karen. Mm-hmm. Karen Altabeff. So I've mentioned before that the pattern was originally written for um, a DK yarn, and I did not knit it in that. So I had to I had a different gauge because I knit mine in the Prosper yarn. Um, it's a fingering 
yarn and it's 60% merino, 20% yak, and 20% silk. And it's really like wearing air. It's so light and fluffy. Mm -hmm. um, and the color is P-O-P, -P, a capital P, capital O, capital P. And at first I was like, pop, what's that? Because mm -hmm. I grew up on the West Coast and pop is soda. <laughs> That's what you drink, right? Mm -hmm. Soda pop. Um, or I thought pop of color, but it stands for pooling on purpose, and that's what it does. And this colorway is rubber sole. And I used four hanks of yarn when I had to change my um, gauge, which I had more stitches, so I used a smaller needle. Um, well, actually, I used a bigger needle than it calls for, but because I'm a tight knitter, I ended up having a smaller gauge, so I was worried I wouldn't have enough yarn. I originally bought four hanks, and I still had some left over. Where's mm -hmm. my leftover? I had this leftover. Oh, not, not a ton. Not a ton, mm -hmm. but that's a lot of yarn because it's mm -hmm. fingering. Mm -hmm. um, but I used a US 7. It was suggested a US 6. Um, I had 25 stitches per 4 inches. And with that, Karen, I've talked about this before. She helped me calculate. I wanted a 44-inch bust. It actually came out to a 45. So look at that. Oh, good. And actually, that's after I've worn it and my daughter's worn it. So mm -hmm. it might have stretched a little bit. So mm -hmm. it might actually be 44. So it came out perfectly. So with my gauge, I made the largest size, which is a size 8. Um... I already talked about some of the mistakes I made. I had, didn't have, I was missing stitches. So on my last raglan increase, I just increased in every place that I needed an mm -hmm. extra stitch. It was many. I mean, at least four. Um, but nobody would ever notice. I couldn't even tell you where it is. Um, but the other one I wanted to talk about, last time I talked about it, it was already bound off. The body was bound off. Mm -hmm. And I had about one inch of rib. I also decided to just do one by one rib. Karen has her alternative to rib mm -hmm. written in the pattern but I just wanted um, it just to be like a little more casual so I just did one by one rib and I used my regular bind off which for me my regular stretchy bind off is knit one well knit or purl follow the pattern mm -hmm. and then those two stitches you knit together through the back loop and that's how you decrease one and then you knit the next one in pattern then you knit them, knit them together through the back loop okay. But when I finished, it still wasn't stretchy enough. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't because the, the sweater is just really springy and, and stretchy and mm -hmm. glorious. And it just didn't, the bind off didn't feel like it matched the sweater. So I, um, you know, I started the, the first sleeve, I think last uh, um, episode, I was doing the rib right. on the first sleeve. And I decided then, <laughs> I tell you always, I'm a lazy knitter. <laughs> I just want to do the, the path of least resistance and just do the easiest thing and the fastest thing. And I, I'm i not a process never, knitter. I don't crave to learn something new just for the sake of learn, learning something new. I crave the object. So whatever is the fastest thing, that's what I want to do. <laughs> and I know a lot of people, once they le learn an Italian sewn bind off or a tubular bind off, they swear by it and they never do anything else. Mm -hmm. And... I know it looks beautiful, and I've done it once on something, and I just kept resisting. But when I got close to the end of that sleeve, I said, you know what, I'm just going to try it. So I asked Jana to tell me which video she used, mm -hmm. and um, it's the Chili Dog video. Mm -hmm. And there's this really interesting thing where you put one of those clippy stitch markers in the first two stitches, so you don't have to do any setup on those first two stitches. You also don't do not do any setup rows. Mm -hmm. So technically, it's not really a tubular bind off right. because there's no tube being created. Uh, it's more just more like an Italian sewn bind off. But instead of um, doing two setups, the first two stitches with setup stitches, she has you put a little clippy stitch marker on it that mm -hmm. holds them, mm -hmm. and then you you bind them off when you go the first round, and then as you come around the end, you bind them off again, where you include them in the, the end of the bind off. So, and it was just perfect from the first. Oh, it was so perfect. It really was. I don't know why I resist. <laughs> I'm just so old school. Hmm. I don't know, but thank you for that video. And I think for me, everything is new to me, so yeah. it's not. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I'm not, then I'm not set in my ways yet. <laughs> I'm very set in my ways. <laughs> no. So I, then at that point, even before I did the second sleeve, I ripped out the bottom of the sweater. Mm -hmm. Um, and I actually decided cause I did two inches of rib, but two and a quarter inches on the sleeves and I had only done one inch on the body and I just wanted to add another inch. So mm -hmm. anyway, so I added the extra inch. I did the 
chili dog tubular bind off mm-hmm. in the round in the round right. and it's perfect yeah. oh my goodness it's so beautiful mm-hmm. and then I did the second sleeve and it's really I mean it's hard to say it's my favorite because I love my Orkney I love so many sweaters mm-hmm. but um before I even could wear it well let me finish with this first so the finished measurements just so you know um my chest is 45 my length from the underarm to the rib is 12 inches and I think the pattern said 11 inches so I made it a tiny bit longer <clears throat> my rib as I said was two and a quarter inches so total length from the underarm to the bottom of the rib is 14 and a quarter inches and my sleeves are 17 and a quarter inches long um but I wanted my daughter just to try it on because it's hard for me to see what it looks like when I'm trying it on so mm-hmm. I had her try it on mm-hmm. my daughter Elena who lives with me and she said can I wear this to work tomorrow <laughs> And um, I said, sure. I mean, I hadn't even worn it, but I said, just be careful with Velcro. Do you ever worry about Velcro? Oh, yes. And I have had Velcro issues. You had Velcro issues Uh, in my car recently. I'm a Velcro magnet, evidently. I was telling someone the other day, my my husband's beard is like Velcro. And when I have really long hair, it just sticks sticks to to his beard. beard. (laughs) So that's a... Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, with little... She has little kids. And so everything has Velcro. Diaper bags and backpacks and so I always worry Even about diapers. my diapers yeah my yarns yeah. with um luckily they're out of diapers but yeah. she wore it um the next day to work and then what's really funny is she said she she's the concierge the at the front desk of the local health club near us that we belong to and so now when that it's getting colder it's finally mm-hmm. getting colder the cold air rushes in the doors mm-hmm. every time someone comes in and out mm-hmm. so she's always cold <laughs> and she's supposed to dress nicely though mm-hmm. so she started this little series wearing mama's sweaters every day she wears a sweater of mine oh that's sweet it's been really fun yeah and she takes a picture and posts it on social media and mm-hmm. then she sends me some more pictures and then i post them <laughs> and what i found interesting obviously you know, this sweater isn't going to fit everybody. Mm -hmm. But what I find interesting is we worry so much about size and fit. Um, Size is just a number. I mean, I make a large or extra large and my daughter is a small or extra small. Mm -hmm. And she, she's wearing these sweaters and they're oversized Mm -hmm. and they look beautiful. Mm -hmm. It just depends on what you feel good wearing, what you like. Yeah. And what we were talking about is she's pretty tall. She's very tall, so, 5'10". 5'10". So she, I'm 5'7". Yeah. So she's accommodating some of the you know, the length of the sweater right. really well. And she's, yeah. she's dropped a gorgeous. So. And the way she styles them are so neat. <laughs> oh, so yeah. she's if you want to see a beautiful, beautiful young woman, by the time this airs, she will have gone through all my sweaters. Cause I really don't <laughs> have that many, but if you want to like follow me on um, Instagram, it is me, Nitty Kimmy or on Facebook. Um, then you can see the whole series um, just cause every day then I repost it and it's been really fun to do that. And she's as beautiful on the inside. She is. Yeah, she's she is. really sweet. <laughs> okay, so yeah, um, and then obviously you can follow my daughter as well. Um, she's, what is she now? Still, still Elena Ramirez. Yeah, still mm-hmm. Elena Ramirez. We can put that in the show notes as well on Instagram. She has a bit of a following. <laughs> so, And actually people now are asking, um, and they always do, can can she make one for me? You know, right. can, I, can I knit a sweater <laughs> for them or whatever? And so I've told her to say, well, you can learn to knit. And then she's, um, actually she's been sending people, you know, like go to pick up every stitch, tell mm-hmm. them Elena and Kim sent you, mm-hmm. maybe take lessons. Um, that's that. Sorry, I'm rambling, but <laughs> it's been funny to see. It's been fun and funny. And also my daughter is, is, you know, I don't know. It's on her Instagram page, but she's just recently gotten divorced. So she's going through a hard time. And so one thing I thought about one day when she was wearing my sweater is, um, I asked her, does it feel like mommy's arms are hugging you because you're wearing my sweater all day? And she said, yes, it does. So, yeah, it's nice. It's nice for her to have a bit of me with her when Mm -hmm. she's at work. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, let's hear about your finished objects. Well, um, I have four, and one of them I forgot. So, well, anyway, I made the heart. And last episode I talked about I was making the heart that came with the... is it 24 Christmas balls? Anyway, Arn and Carlos, this year, I purchased the Christmas balls pattern just so I could get this knitted felted heart that I thought was adorable. And I thought I could make a bunch of them for our Christmas tree or give them away. Um, and I bought some Freitas Garn here, which is, I want to say it's an Aran weight. So I knit this heart and it was quite large. <laughs> it was I- this big. It was big. big. It was yeah. big. Bigger and than so you would imagine. I'm going to knit it again in a DK because I did felt it. It took 
you know, I, we talked about this in a previous video. Mm -hmm. video. Um, I put it in with a pair of red sneakers, jeans, um, you know, and, and there was a lot of uh, free space, empty space in the washing machine, but I have a front loader. So it didn't felt that well. And then I actually, someone else recommended that I use like Dawn or dish liquid and hot water and two pieces of bubble wrap. And I rubbed it back and forth in the bubble wrap. Anyway, it's as felted as it's going to get. So it is not going on the Christmas tree, but I do use it as like a trivet for my little, I have a little teapot, little blue teapot. So we'll put in a picture because I forgot to bring the heart. So. Well, because it's functional. It actually sits <laughs> on our dining room table right. with the teapot so on it. So it was sitting on the dining room table yeah. and that's why I forgot to put it in my <laughs> bag because it didn't scream, I don't belong Take here. me with you. Exactly. <laughs> so my other three finished objects are hats. And I think I might actually start with this one because I cast this one on in episode 12, in the beginning of episode 12. While so, we were setting up. While we were setting up. <laughs> because I have a mini obsession with the Oslo hat by Petite Knit. So this is for my sister-in-law. And I mentioned briefly that she had lost a hat that I made for her. So this is a replacement hat made out of Garthenor Organic Beacons in the color Wild Heather. And this is the junior woman size. Now, the, the pattern, there's two versions of the pattern. And I happen to own both of them. So there must have been an update. So there's the Oslo hat. Then there's the Oslo hat 2.0. In the 2.0 version, which is the newer version, this is the junior woman size. So the new version comes with baby, junior woman, woman, and man. So there's four sizes. Oh. Um, yeah, so I chose the size that actually fits me best, which is the junior woman. Um, and I actually made a baby size, which I'm not sure which kind of baby that it would fit, <laughs> but okay. So this is what I have left over um, from the second skein. So it came in 50 gram skeins. And I purchased the pom-pom at Pick Up Every Stitch. And they have a ginormous selection of pom-poms. Um, I have some here next to me. But they also have a ton of pom-poms around the corner that I, I couldn't, that I can't show you. But if you need a pom-pom, call Pick Up Every Stitch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and they're not all on their website because a lot no, of them are one of a just, kind. And yeah. And as soon as they're sold, then they would have to modify the website. Right. And, yeah, it's a hassle. So this one does have a button for the perky pom-pom. Is it a two-hole button or a four-hole? It's a four-hole. Oh, I just it put is it through. a four-hole button. I put it through just two of the holes, so actually. I should probably have tied this a little bit tighter. Um, and I wish these buttons were a little bit bigger, but it's what I could find at the time. Yeah, so I did want to talk about this pattern a little bit because there are like, I don't know, 12,000 projects on Ravelry, but there are some issues, definitely. If you read through some of the projects, people um, have had some issues with the pattern. So, um, let's see. This pattern is not the mohair edition. The mohair edition, you hold two strands of mohair. This one, you actually, uh, it's recommended that you hold two, stands, two strands of the Sanis Garn Sunday. Now, the Sunday yarn is a light fingering. I want to say there's like over 500 yards in 100 grams. So, it's definitely a light fingering. Mm -hmm. So, I either use a regular fingering plus a mohair to make DK, or I just knit it with a DK yarn. And this is a DK yarn. Mm -hmm. So one strand of DK. Um, the gauge is 22 stitches for four inches. And my gauge is just spot on with a size, a US size four needle. So yeah, I get really lucky with uh, my gauge. <clears throat> um, let's see. So the original pattern I mentioned has a child size, which I guess corresponds to the new baby size. And it has a sewn down brim. So you start out knitting and you knit for a while. And then I pick up stitches from the cast on edge. So I fold the brim, pick up stitches from the cast on edge and knit it together with the stitches that are on my needle. Now that works great for me. I don't have any issues. The most important thing though for me is to find that first cast on stitch and I put a stitch marker in it so I know where to start. Because if you start off a stitch or two, your brim is going to be twisted. So definitely be careful. So show me exactly <laughs> where is the cast on row? Where on the hat is the cast on? It's knitted together with this right here. It's here. <laughs> and so you knitted you knitted that way and around, or, or I don't know. So when you start the hat, you're knitting the brim. Mm -hmm. So I'm starting from the cast on edge. Mm -hmm. And so I guess <clears throat> I'm starting here, knitting down and knitting up. 
Okay. Yeah. And then you just continue knitting for a little while. Remember, we you thought we that talked was about because, that. Yeah. Um, I thought it was so that you wouldn't see the river stuck in it, but right. it actually helps with the fold, you said, right? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. I think so. It gives you a definite place to fold the brim up. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, and so then you have this brim, and you have the end where your needles are, and you have the cast-on edge. Then mm -hmm. what do you do? So I just fold it up to meet, meet the... You fold your needle up on the outside? No, I fold the cast-on edge up on the inside Okay. to meet... So I have wrong sides together, just like sewing. Wrong okay. sides mm -hmm. um, instead of right sides together. <laughs> wrong uh -huh. sides together. Uh -huh. So, um, so your right sides are showing, and then I pick up a stitch from the cast on, and I knit it together with the first stitch on my needle, and I just do that all the way around. Now, there's a big debate if you go and read some of the projects on Ravelry. A lot of people say just to use a provisional cast on, and absolutely, if that is what you want to do absolutely do that and it will work beautifully. I personally can't be bothered and picking up the stitches from the cast on edge, it's very, um, it's you find easy. It easy. It's, you know, one stitch right after the other and it, it has a absolutely beautiful seamless result. So, so do you me, pick up that stitch, put it on your needle and then knit the two mm -hmm. together? Mm -hmm. I see. Mm -hmm. So, nice. you know, whatever floats your boat, you can do it however you want. There is debate about it though. Um, now, there is also a difference in the pattern, and this is getting into minutia here, but this one has one knit stitch between the decreases. The original pattern doesn't have that knit stitch. So you can knit it, you can leave it up. You can do your decreases together. You can mm -hmm. choose different decreases. She doesn't do an SSK. She does a different kind of decrease, but honestly, you can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. um, and the only other thing I wanted to mention is there are excellent tutorials on petitenit.com. So if you have any questions about um, the cast on edge that we just talked about, I watched the video myself today and I, it, she does it exactly. Now by she, I don't mean um, Meta. I mean whoever she hires to do her tutorials did it exactly the way that I do it. So I thought that the tutorials were great. Um, was there one other thing I wanted to mention? Um, so when she, in the directions, when she talks about the decrease rounds, it almost seems like you should move your beginning of round marker, but honestly, just read the directions, stick to the directions, and when it says, you know, knit to the marker, slip the marker, and then knit the decrease, just follow the directions is my best advice. So um, Trust it's a pattern. very uh, simple pattern, but I see where, you know, people can, um, you know, wonder if they're doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. So anyway, mm -hmm. I love this pattern. I honestly, you know, I say to my dad every once in a while, he's 89, you know, I'm like, oh, dad, life is hard. Sometimes I just want to knit around and around and around. So this has just <laughs> been my comfort knit and I'm absolutely loving it. And I hope that I can think of more, you know, more people to knit hats for. So anyway, that is my, also for my sister-in-law. And I have a lovely neighbor who, um, I had to run over to her house the other day. I'm like, help, I need help. <laughs> so, um, Did you need a cup of flour or something? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I said, hey, um, I know you won't let me, you know, return the favor, so can I knit you a hat? And she said, hmm. She said, yeah, you can. She said uh, she had a hat that a college roommate had knit her that was now too big. And she said, but warning, I have a small, small head. So I had her come over and try on my hat, and mm -hmm. it fit. But I thought just to be on the safe side, I will make the, the one that's just about just smaller. So mm -hmm. this is the baby hat. But honestly, I don't know. This, this is <laughs> this big for like a baby. baby. <laughs> but this yarn, I have to just say, is my new favorite yarn. It is incredible. <laughs> to knit with. What is it? It is, the brand is Pasquale, and this is a Tibetan. Yes. And you, your favorite thing last episode was knit in the fingering version of this same yarn. Yes, the sweater with the fingering. The Richmond Hill the, um, pullover. Yeah, the Fair Isle sleeves. Right, the mm -hmm. Richmond Hill pullover. Um, it's the softest yarn in the world. I mean, not, probably not, but <laughs> one of them. It's just it is. beautiful. It's organic merino and yak in the color aubergine and I of course I found this pom-pom and I just thought oh my goodness this is a match made in heaven mm -hmm. um it's interesting because the Pasquale website actually calls this a worsted weight yarn but it comes in at 274 
yards for 100 grams, which is definitely in the DK. So <clears throat> I'm not really sure. I It's on their DK wall. Mm -hmm. It knit up to be DK. So I'm going to say it's like a DK. like a worsted, but yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say it's a DK. So... Yeah, that is my big spiel about the Oslo hat. I think I would consider myself an Oslo hat expert at this point. Nice. This is my sixth one, and I've made modified versions, um, but honestly, it's just a great all-around beanie. And I love the pom-poms. Obviously, you don't need to use a pom-pom. Mm -hmm. The um, pattern actually doesn't have a pom-pom on it, so yeah. Nice. All right. Oh, and this is about, this is how much I have left over. From the second skein. And this was, you know, this was a little bit of a splurge. It's $22 for a 50 gram ball. It was a little bit of a splurge, but it was absolutely worth it. But it's a little hat, so. Yeah, and I am concerned. I did make one, and it, it is pilling a little bit. So I just, I think with the yak, this is um, this is not going to pill at all. And the Garth and Organic was actually fairly reasonable. Um, and both incredible, incredible yarns. So if you're into a splurge for a gift, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, but the Sunday yarn is very affordable. Oh, yes. I want to say it's $11 for a 50 gram skein. Um, and what did I say? There's a, ooh, uh, 200 and something. How do you remember these things? 257 yards. Well, I was writing my notes. You're amazing. <laughs> 257 <laughs> yards per 50 gram skein. Yeah. So you need two of them. So that'd be about a $20 hat, $22 hat. So I think that I mean, I think that's fabulous. Exactly. So for yeah. a hundred percent wool hat. Oops. Yeah, Norwegian wool. Uh oh. <laughs> I just got the end. Oops. I hate that when that happens. It's fine. <laughs> it's just like, oh, I didn't so realize I, I was at the of, end of the ball. I need a sip of tea. Mm -hmm. And by the way, my only finished object is this tweed tea. So Jonna is covering all the finished objects today. Mm. <laughs> well, they're all little. So I got we got home from the Fiber Festival of New England right. that we went to on November 5th. Was that like two weeks ago? Yeah. And it was fun. It was so relaxing and it was a, it was a really nice setup. The aisles of the festival were wide. We could get in and out of booths easily. It wasn't crowded. There were an really adorable animals and we saw some friends. We saw the knitting posse. We also saw Kevin and Ray from Needles at the Ready and we brought friends. Yes, yes, we did. That was fun. We brought um, Claudia and Elise, mm -hmm. Jonna's friend Claudia, um, and my friend Elise, and it was really fun. Oh, and then my daughter Jenny, I, we talked about this, I think, in the hat video, mm -hmm. right? A little mm -hmm. bit. Um, she, I realized the night before that she only lived a half hour away from the Fiber Festival of New England, which was in... West Springfield, Massachusetts. Right. <laughs> um and so, you know, my daughter has three kids, so they're usually crazy busy on Saturdays, but they weren't busy, so they drove up and they met us there, yeah. and they had so much fun as well. Um, my daughter is not a knitter. I've taught her, not well, Elena's a little bit more of a knitter. Elena's the one who's been wearing my sweaters to work. Um, Jenny has learned to knit, but she just has three little kids and really busy life right now, so she doesn't have time. Um, so they came up, she wore a ranunculus I made for her, which was so cute. And the kids, I gave them each, I said this already, I gave them each a couple dollars and they got to like buy, you know, there's a lot of little stuffed animals and jewelry and stuff like that. That was really fun, but we had fun. Yeah. Yeah. It was an old fashioned road trip. Yes. It was really nice. And I hadn't seen my friend Claudia in a couple months. So we, we had a lot of catching up to do. In we back, saw a whole bunch seat. of viewers mm -hmm. yeah we did so. we took a lot of pictures mm -hmm. and thank you to everybody who came up and said hello yes there were a couple salty air tees so we took a couple pictures i was wearing my salty air tee both of them were gray they really like matched yours yeah. right both of them were was it the same yarn did they both make no mm -mm. i think one used moondrake mm -hmm. and i was mine is knit in pearl soho linen quill and mine is like a pinky red color but it was really warm that day i'm so glad i wore that sweater because it was it was a little warm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We'll talk a little bit more about the Fiber Festival of New England at the okay. end, right? Yeah. Nice. But did you buy this yarn there? So, yeah, that's how I <clears throat> got on the subject. So I bought this yarn, and I think I wound it into a cake as soon as I got home. This is from Fox Hill Farm, and this was my destination booth. If I didn't see anything else, I was going to Fox Hill Farm. So this is their Aaron Waite. How did you know about Fox Hill Farm? From Kristen Lair, from the um, Kristen Lair podcast. Oh, okay. Yeah, YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. So 
I bought this Aaron Waite and I knew I was gonna make a hat out of it. And this is Jason's cashmere hat. It's a free pattern on Ravelry and I have made probably six of these also. And I can, I made this in a couple nights. So this is a fairly quick knit. Um, this, now I wanna talk about the color of this yarn. It's not dyed, it's a Morit, Morit, Morit. Um, M-O-O-R-I-T, I'm gonna yeah, put it in -O -O -R -I -T. the captions. Yeah, M-O-O-R-I-T. So it's crossed, uh, she has a Cormo uh, flock. I don't know if this is Cormo, but it's a Morit uh, cross. So it's naturally this color. The Moret sheep, the Moret recessive gene, these sheep have brown leather, brown noses, brown fur, all different shades of brown, honestly, from light brown to dark brown. So Merino sheep over time have been bred to have the whitest of the white fleece. Hmm. And so this Moret gene has has been bred out of the current flock of Merino, Merino sheep that oh, exists wow. today. Mm -hmm. So it's relatively rare. And I just thought it was just, I just loved every, the aesthetic about her booth. Nothing is dyed. Everything is, it's natural color. I love that. So I bought one skein of this and I have this tiny ball left. So I was definitely playing yarn chicken, but I knit the hat to pattern. It has a, just a beautiful crown, beautiful cables and decreases. I didn't use a cable needle. This yarn is definitely woolly wool and my husband tried it on today and it looked really great on him mm. so I'm giving this to my husband he doesn't wear hats too often but you know when you need a hat that's nice that he has a couple to choose from mm. I also made him an Oslo um but one thing I wanted to talk about that a viewer actually commented about blocking slash washing mm -hmm. and hats in particular now as Kristen says, you know, your mileage may vary, absolutely do whatever you need to do. And sometimes I block my hats immediately after making them. Sometimes I don't, sometimes I wear them first. However, I did want to talk a little bit about blocking hats and the reason why you might want to block a hat. Now this is woolly wool and I knew it has vegetable matter in it. It could also have other things in it. Um, and I knew that it would probably bloom and soften up a bit. So I definitely wanted to wash this. And I washed it in fairly hot water, not boiling or anything, but hot out of the tap water and some eucalyptus, and just let it soak for an hour or so, which is what I normally do. And then I just squeeze the water out of it. And then I lay it in a flat in a towel, roll the towel up and then stomp on it a bunch mm -hmm. of times. And then by then, honestly, it's pretty dry. Now, I didn't want to make this any larger than it was. So honestly, I just laid it flat to dry and I'm home. So I'm turning it inside out as it's drying. I'm rotating the way it's laying on the blocky mat so mm -hmm. that I don't get a crease. So honestly, it didn't need a lot of shaping. So that's my, my little spiel about blocking. Um, now, why you might not want to block a hat if it's made out of superwash and you don't want it to stretch, you might not want to block your hat. You mm -hmm. might want to just have it conform to the uh, your head. Now, if you wanted to, if it's a little on the, on the small side and you want to stretch it out a little bit, yeah, go ahead and block it. So, you know. But ultimately, it's a hat. I mean, I know my, my husband's head, you know, it, it, he sweats mm -hmm. and it has like the normal natural oils. You're going to want to wash at some point. You're going to have to wash the hat. Exactly. Soak it and then to get it back in shape. One thing you don't want to do, and this is what I learned from this blocking class, and the more you block things, you know, you don't want to have your thing soaking in the water and you just pick it up like this mm -hmm. and it's hanging. Because mm -hmm. if it has any propensity to stretch, mm -hmm. the weight of that water is just mm -hmm. going to stretch out. You always want to like cradle it in the water and pick it up and never let pieces of it hang and mm -hmm. dangle. And gently, as you said, squeeze it, don't wring it. Mm -hmm. I love the towel thing. I actually put it in the towel, roll it up, and I put it on the ground. Oh, yeah, you said stomp mm -hmm, on it. I just, mm -hmm. I don't know. I do. I do the same thing. Um, but at some point, you're going to want to wash it, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to, after you wash it, then block it, lay it out somewhere to dry, mm -hmm. right? Right. And so I guess the comment was something about, you know, well, don't you wash your hats? And so that brings up the whole other subject, which, which is, of course, you want to wash your hats, especially at the end of the season, because of sweat mm -hmm. and uh, just soil and dry skin. And, um, you know, the moths actually are attracted to the dry skin, mm -hmm. the skin cells and the flakes and stuff. I told you my husband's hats for the last episode, I found them in his coat pockets. Yeah. In like a kind of a, well, we know now our room is damp, so everything smelled mildewy. It was so washing is a whole other, yeah, yeah 
Wash your hats. <laughs> right. Wash your hats, especially at the end of the season, and especially if you're sweating or you, you maybe you use a lot of product in your hair or whatever the case may be. So, um, and then, you know, in the case of maybe a beret, you're going to want to block it and maybe use a plate to, to shape that beret. So I did that once. It's so magical. Yeah. Putting, because it doesn't look like it's going to fit on the plate. And then when you put uh, well, it on the plate, the opening, it smaller. puts that crease in it. That's mm. just the most amazing thing. I love mm. it so much. So yeah, that is my spiel about blocking. Oh, another reason you might want to block is to remove any kind of excess dye that's in the yarn that you don't want to get on your head. Mm -hmm. And then if you're working on a color work hat and you want to just, you know, redistribute those stitches and, you know, make that fabric really cohesive and, you know, sometimes there's spinning oil in yarn too. So mm -hmm. that's another reason to wash and block your hat. So yeah, yeah I mean... Yeah. I mean, it can't hurt, really. It can't. No, not at and all. And you don't want to make something that can't be gotten wet. I mean, right? Right. right. Um, speaking of that, a lot of your hats you're gifting. So do mm -hmm. you give them? I always give a little bit of yarn, like a butterfly mm -hmm. of yarn, extra yarn, mm -hmm. and I always give them a label from mm -hmm. the yarn ball. Mm -hmm. And I point out to them to look at the care instructions mm -hmm. so that they know. Do you do the same thing when you give a gift? So a usually it's gift? to a family member, and I just put the fear of God in them and say, don't lose this. And <laughs> <laughs> Don't put this in the washing machine. But this one actually is going to um, a friend. So I'm going to give her this the little label that mm -hmm. came with the yarn and show her how to remove the pom-pom. I was thinking I could have tried this one on. Show her how to remove the pom-pom. Oh, so I just love this color. It matches your glasses. Kind oh, of. does it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, so that she can wash the hat if she needs to. So Yeah. Yeah. But I know sometimes I've given my daughter, for instance, that little bit of yarn and I'll go to her house one day and she'll say, oh, there's a hole in this, whatever. Oh, and I say, where's mm -hmm. that little bit of yarn? Mm -hmm. I use those little snack Ziploc bags mm -hmm. and I put it in there and she pulls it out and I oh, fix good. I fix the project. Because by the time I would go home, find the yarn if mm -hmm. I even knew where it was. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, I like have, doing that. I have a bucket that I, or a, some kind of bag or something, or bin, <laughs> that I throw all the leftover yarn Leftover in, yarns so, in. Yeah. Anyway. Nice. I think that is it for no more finished objects. Finished objects. Yeah. Cool. So um, I did pick out new yarn though, as one does for another hat. Yeah, in the Pasquale Tibetan again in this gorgeous blue for my daughter. So I was playing around with <clears throat> pom pom choices. I don't know. Uh, you know, it's nice. It's really nice. The monochromatic kind of thing, or I don't. They have a, they have <laughs> the most gorgeous pom poms here. So if I was going to go and do something crazy, that would be pretty, too. Wow, that's really fun. <clears throat> yeah, so anyway, that's it. That's really a fun pom-pom. Yeah. Okay, so works in progress. Sorry, I just kicked you. That's okay. <laughs> you can kick me. It's like, I feel like we're a little, like, close today. Yeah, we have a lot of things. <laughs> Funny. It does. I, <clears throat> sometimes we come here and I feel like we rearrange the entire store, mm -hmm. pushing things out of the way. And I don't know, today I was, just wanted to move as little as possible. So we're just tucked in this little tiny corner. <laughs> oh, we didn't talk about what's on the, the mannequins. The mannequins. Oh, and that's always in the show notes also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that's the super simple summer sweater mm -hmm. by Hohe. Uh -huh. Don't know what the yarn is. This is, the we're going to talk about that yeah, later. The Amy Slipover uh, by Santa Scarn. And that is the... Do you remember what it's called? By Junko. What's the name of the Junko? Yep. Papa. 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 By Junko. Yeah, Junko Okamoto. <laughs> Okamoto. Junko. I tried this on once, and it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I just have so many sweaters to knit. I just, I can't. <laughs> but. Yes. And the whole world knows how many sweaters you have to knit. So. I know. And I have more now. <laughs> Let's not talk about Well, we are going to talk about it later. So my work in progress, I, I'm really getting back to my monogamous knitter self. And it just is making me much more happy. I know I haven't started the Here Comes the Sun sweater yet. But it's fine because I haven't cast anything else on. Mm -hmm. I'm just finishing what I already had on the needles. Right. Um, and one of them is this baby blanket. Again, it's um, inspired by Isabel Kramer's Vika shawl. Half of the shawl is Takanet and half of it is these um, delicate little, I mean, I, they're kind of like cables, but it really isn't. It's, you slip the stitch, the stitches on the right side and the wrong side. And then the next row, you move that slip stitch over um, a couple of stitches. So, mm -hmm. and they move toward each other. So it's kind of not really, it's more like a slip stitch thing, but um, it's really, it's really easy to knit. 
it's just slow. And this is the project that I take out of the house because mm-hmm. the other project is my Amina. Mm-hmm. And I love it. It's really soft. Um, I'm a little concerned because I only did a one inch rib and it tends to mm. flip up a little. Mm-hmm. And I asked about it actually in the blocking class with Shana. Um, and she said it's probably because I should have used a smaller needle on the rib. It's mm-hmm. probably, but I'll, if I stretch out the center of the blanket a little bit, it should be fine. Mm. But it's a baby blanket. I mean, it, it's going to be right. on the floor. It's going to be That's not a garment. getting tangled in the wheels of a stroller. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm using Long Yarns Aura, A-U-R-A, which is completely machine washable. It's cotton, mostly cotton and then some nylon. So it'll be perfect for a baby that I don't know. Mm-hmm. The baby was already born. I talked to the grandfather, who is my brother's friend. And I'm not going to make a baby bonnet. He's perfectly fine with the 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 um, blanket. Mm-hmm. He said they can wait. Mm-hmm. At this age, you don't have a baby sleep with the blanket anyway, mm-hmm. right? So, yeah, it's it's fun. I can't wait to finish it though. I can't wait to cast on something new. Yeah, my here comes the sun. The mm-hmm. yarn is waiting for me. I haven't started swatching, but I really can't wait. So that's one of my whips. Nice. Let's hear about yours. Uh, let's see. Well, my big one is my Zoria sweater by Marzina Kolazek in Knitting for Olive, which I did buy here at Pick Up Every Stitch. I was reading some of the reviews. This was $10 for 50 grams, 125 meters, in the color powder. It does look a little pink now. It, the yeah. first time you showed me, I oh, didn't okay. think it looked a little pink, yeah, but today I, I, I do. I think it's a little pink. I think it looks a little I'm pink. I'm hoping it's a little pink. <laughs> um, I was reading some of the comments about this yarn on Ravelry, and some people said it was not stretchy at all that it was like really rigid and inflexible I have not found that to be the case at all it is a the hand it's a bit dry but as long as I have some lotion on my my beautiful violet lotion from uh Paola Paola from Italy Mm -hmm. uh it's completely fine so I've really enjoyed knitting with this it comes in beautiful colors too so this is my Zoria and honestly I'm hoping to wear this for Christmas, so I'm not plowing through it, mostly because I am just absolutely loving knitting it. So let's see if I can get it here in the right. (laughs) So I finished, I put the left side on my barber cords today. So this is the right side, this is the left side, and now I need to pick up stitches along the the shoulder seam, Mm -hmm. and then knit the back. And then at some point, I join So will you pick round. all the way along the mm-hmm. shoulders, the back of the collar, and here, mm-hmm. and then do the whole thing in one piece? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Um, so, yeah. We'll see how that goes. And I, I'm just really loving the increases in this twisted rib. I think it's really beautiful, the way a new column of twisted rib grows out. I of, see that. Yeah. So... I tried it. I tried it on. I set it on my shoulders, and I was concerned about the V not being deep enough. I did measure it, and it's measuring almost exactly to the schematic of the pattern. But when you join the front and the back together, you continue the V, which is a relief to me because it. I mean, I, I don't need it to be. I wanted it to be like yours. Yeah, like you a know. V. Yeah, a deep V. So yeah. I am really loving making it. Now, in the pattern, there are these little, and she calls them bobbles. I don't know if you can see these little bits of texture. So my friend Claudia and I were having this discussion in the backseat of the car on the way to uh, the Fiber Festival of New England. Noops or bobbles? Noops versus bobbles. And How do you spell noop? N-U-P-P. Oh, yes. I would say nup. Oh, I know. It's noop. Okay. I think it's noop. Okay. So there's Estonian noops, and there's all different kinds of noops, and there's all different kinds of baubles. But a bobble basically, and you asked me, I think, something about knitting back and forth, or somebody asked me. And so a bobble is you're making extra loops out of one stitch. You're making several stitches, and then you're knitting those stitches back and forth, and then you knit them all together mm-hmm. to create the bobble. So bobbles to me are more three-dimensional. They're just bigger. So a noop, though... You do the same thing, and, and instead of maybe a knit front back, I was making yarn over. So I was making five loops out of one stitch. So there are five loops, and I use a crochet hook, actually, to get through those five loops because it can be tricky with knitting needles, and I knit those five loops together. So that is my noob. Now, sometimes if you're knitting a noob, 
you don't resolve those five loops until you come to the back side of your work. Then you purl those loops together. I see. So be sure to use stitch markers if you're doing that. So I was panicking a little bit thinking, well, these aren't very bobble like Maybe I'm not doing that. Maybe I'm not reading the directions correctly, but I actually think that they are noops and I think that they're just fine. <laughs> so it just adds a little bit of texture. And I think the twisted rib, even purling through the back loop is not freaking me out. So I am actually loving every stitch of this, but I do hope to have it finished by Christmas because um, I think it's going to be a beautiful Christmas sweater. Yeah, so, really And nice. I already have the black pants to wear with it. So <laughs> well, I am good. excited. Um, oh, and one other thing about the pattern, which I thought was fantastic, is that when you purchase the pattern, you get all the sizes. So I downloaded my size, which this is a size one. It has a ton of positive ease. I meant to look that up before I came and I forgot, but a ton of positive ease. Uh, so I downloaded just the uh, pattern for my size. So I don't have to keep track of where I am in the pattern. Usually I use my good notes and I'll use a highlighter and I'll highlight where my stitch counts are oh, on my right. size mm -hmm. so that I, you know, I don't goof. Um, but where's my good notes on here? So you basically only have, you don't have all these parentheses with all these other sizes. No, it's only your it's size. It's only my size. That's and brilliant. so I had this panic moment where I was like, huh? What size am I making? <laughs> and then I realized that it was only one size. So um, the suggested ease is 11 to 15 inches. Yeah, and I know for me personally, I've at least learned this in my three and a half plus years that I don't, I don't like that much ease. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm going to make it fairly cropped, which is how I normally uh, make things. But the pants I got to go with them, I got them at Zara and they literally, they're so high waisted. They're, um, you know, they're practically in my armpits. So <laughs> Yes, it will be cropped. So that is my Zoria. Nice. It's a, it's a slow burn, shall we say. <laughs> I love it. It's really beautiful. Yeah, thank the you. The texture, the cables, the lace. It's really, really And I feel like this is one of those sweaters. You could buy, like, Knit Picks Wool of the Andes, um, you know, for $3 for a 50-gram ball and make this sweater for, you know, under $50 maybe. Even, you know, this yarn didn't break the bank. So I feel like this is one of those sweaters. It's so beautiful. You could easily buy. Um, oh, and this is in a me made project bag. <laughs> My little rice bag. Jonas circled bottom rice bag. Yep. Designed by Casey Stevens. Casey is that? Stevens. Oh, wow. Yeah. Who um, recently posted on Instagram that she lost her, her dog. So not um, and by lost, I mean her dog passed away. So mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway. All right. All right. So we have a few more minutes on this go around with the camera. Okay. So my next, um, my next whip, my only other whip, well, besides my primrose, oh my goodness. Mm. Well, maybe I'll talk about this before that I have to turn <laughs> the camera off. I just got the email from Arne and Carlos mm. that about they'll the be in Prince crochet. Edward Island doing mm. a class on the exact blanket that I'm crocheting of theirs, the primrose, the Gunhilde, I think it's mm. called in... Norwegian and oh how I wish I could go it's a three-hour <laughs> class but it would take 12 hours to drive <laughs> over 12 hours it's a little silly but they did a little short video today on YouTube that they're gonna be in Brooklyn I know you know <laughs> I know how did you find out <clears throat> I watched the video oh yeah but we keep trying to figure out how we can go meet them we can meet them <laughs> yeah we would love to meet so, them so close yet so far mm-hmm yeah so we'll see if we can make it happen but I won't mm -hmm. be able to go to Prince Edward Island. No. Anyway. So, really on to my Amina. Okay. So I have really been working on my Amina, and I really cannot wait to finish it. As I mentioned, I started it last January. I bought the yarn, and I bought a pre-order of the Worsted Book, which I have in here, which is a collection of knitwear curated by Amy Gill. I'm sure everybody in the knitting world has heard of this book. <laughs> Love it. But, of course, I'm motivated by samples. So last year at Woolen Folk, I saw this sample of the Amina sweater designed by Sylvia Watts Cherry. And as soon as I saw it, I knew I wanted to knit it. I mean, it was beautiful. So, um, so I bought the yarn and the book. As soon as I got the pattern, I'm pretty sure I swatched. And I cast, I cast on last January. So I did the back pretty quickly. It's a traditional knitted flat. You usually always knit the back first. So the back is finished and it looks like it's going to fit me perfectly. 
Um, it it's, can have more positive eads, but again, I don't really love tons of positive eads, mm -hmm. so I think it'll fit perfectly. So that's the back. The colors I chose are um, the Amy Gilles version. The Sylvia Watts Cherry are kind of more pastel. And I am using the colors Moriah is my main color, Sandstone, Stone, and Avoine. Avoine? A-V-O-I-N-E. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the lighter cream color. Of La Bienemy Cori Worsted, which is the suggested yarn. I am making the fifth size, the positive E. I think it, the chest measurement will be um, 50, around 50 inches, but it's completely a rectangle or a square. There's no mm. shaping. Um, shaping at all. It's a, you know, one of those more kind of old fashioned drop shoulders, mm -hmm. but there is shoulder shaping, so it's not truly a square. Uh, also, um, I did get gauge with the suggested needle size, a six for the body, and the ribbing is done with the US three. And <laughs> I think Pearl Loose is here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I think Pearl sees the dogs from the daycare walk uh -huh. by her buddies, and then she barks at them and mm -hmm. says, "I'm still here. I'm still yeah. here." <laughs> also. Um, this pattern is a cropped version and a regular version, and so I am not doing the cropped version. Mm -hmm. So I did finish the back, as I said, and then, as we know, <laughs> it's okay, it's okay, dogs work. I really would like a refill on my tea, but I thought it would be kind of rude if I got it locked out. You want to go make frame. tea? We can take a little break. Are you sure? Yeah, sure. Let's take how a little we, break. How are we doing on time? 5.29. Okay, that was nice. I think we should have half time now. Okay. I mean, like every episode, we should just have a halftime. Sure, an intermission. Yeah. <laughs> You've been watching too much I football. <laughs> I know. Oh, gosh, no, I don't watch any football. That's my husband's yell, but, um, yeah, I don't know, just to refresh your tea and... Let people out of the store. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. Nice. So, so back, back to, to my your Amina. My Amina. Mm -hmm. So I cast this on last January. And as I said, I did the back, and now I'm working on the front. Then when it got too warm to have this laying in my lap, uh, that's when I put it down, which I usually never do. Yeah. And I also, honestly, I didn't own any summer weight sweaters. Because <laughs> I've only, my, I, knit it, I knit myself my first garment. It was a t-shirt in the summer of 2019. And so really just since COVID have I started knitting for myself, um, or right before COVID. So um, I put this down last late winter, early spring, and started knitting a lot of summer weight sweaters, which I'm so happy with. So I was a little nervous to pick it back up, but as soon as I picked it up, it was like riding a bike. I completely remembered what I was doing. Obviously, it's in Tarja. <clears throat> and I just finished, when I had put it down, I was halfway through the third repeat, and now I finished that repeat, and I started the next one. I think there's a total of... Six, probably, depending on how long it's going to be, and maybe starting a seventh to finish off the shoulders. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm really excited about it. I have been sewing in my ends, weaving in my ends as I go. I finished, it takes me a whole day <laughs> to weave in. Actually, a viewer asked, and I think per repeat, what I've been doing, okay, I had never really done intarsia before. My only intarsia was a dinosaur sweater in 1988 <laughs> um, with the dinosaur. So it wasn't that many different yarns. So I, I looked up some videos. I looked up, you know, looked in books and everything. And I didn't really know. Obviously, I wasn't familiar with the pattern, um, the chart so much. So I literally cut each stripe as a separate yarn, even if it's um, a gray stripe for two rows and then a brown stripe for two rows and a gray stripe for two rows. I literally cut a different yarn for each mm -hmm. section of stripe. Mm -hmm. Now that I've been doing this, I showed it to Karen here and she said, you know, you could just run those colors up the side. And I said, oh, <laughs> I could. I think it probably crossed my mind when I started. Um, even these brown frames, there's four rows between each one. And I thought before I started, can't I just um, run the same yarn all the way up? Obviously, the second side has to be a different yarn. It has to be a different piece of yarn. You can't do both sides. Oh, it here. Um, it's okay. It's not going to fall off. But um, when I showed Karen all the 
yarn ends I had to weave in. One pattern repeat has 178 yarn ends to weave in. It's going to tickle your tummy. <laughs> Well, I'm never going to. I'm probably going to wear something under yeah, it. Yeah. I always wear tank tops under everything. Oh, my goodness. Did you show the other side? Yeah, but I think I'm keeping the ends longer until I block it in case I, because it has cabling. Oh, okay. I want to stretch it a little. I don't want the ends to pop through. Right. And then after it's blocked, right. I will cut the ends shorter. Okay. But it almost looks furry on it this does. side, right? <laughs> but I'm getting really excited about it. And um, what I was wondering is... If I did, now this next section, I've already cut all the yarns, and I'm already starting with each yarn separate. But maybe for the fifth repeat, if I wanted to try to run the yarns all the way up, would it look different from the front? Hmm. Would it have different tensioning? I don't think would it, so. I don't think you know, so. one thing I knew about doing every single stripe separate is that it would lay nice and flat. It mm -hmm. wouldn't have any, mm -hmm. I, I always worry that that yarn that runs up, it's going to be too tight and not be... Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I just think just with horizontal floats, vertical floats are the same. Just make sure that they're nice and yeah. stretchy. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I really love it. I can't wait to finish it. I don't remember if there's anything else I was going to say. My husband and I are going away. We're cooking dinner for the family on Thanksgiving, and then we're going away for the rest of the weekend. And so I'm going to bring this and the blanket and also... My mom's friend has a, a store-bought cashmere, one of those really fine, fine cashmere, fine gauge cashmere sweaters that has probably moth holes in it, um, which reminds me, I should probably put it in the freezer mm. in case there's any larvae left in it right. instead of just having it hanging around my house. But I'm going to try to do some visible mending on that. Oh. Um, so I'm going to bring that with me because then I'll have some peace and quiet to really yeah. focus and mm -hmm. try to do visible mending on my mom's friend's sweater. Fun. Yeah, that'll be fun. She just wants simple, no fancy like flowers or mm -hmm. anything like that. So I love my Amina. The sleeves, there's only intarsia on the front pan the front panel. Oh, okay. The sleeves are just the Mariah, the brown, and then at the base of the cuffs is some striping. Was there mm -hmm. striping here? No. So there was no striping on the body cuffs. Um or ribbing. Let's see. Anything else I wanted to say? Yeah, that's it. I'm just tempted it takes me like I said it takes me a whole day to weave in the ends from one pattern mm -hmm. repeat so it's very tempting to want to have less ends to weave in mm -hmm. but I also honestly haven't been mind minding it's mm -hmm. now I just definitely have a system mm -hmm. and I love how I'm doing mm -hmm. it and the result is just mm -hmm. I mean I love it. It's a work so, of art. I love it so much so anyway are there other projects on Ravelry uh, I don't know, and if so, I don't think there's many. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I'll just I don't be look curious to hear about other people's process. <laughs> oh, as far as weaving yeah. in the ends, and I mean, mm -hmm. hmm. doing the intarsia. Just anything. It's kind of it's kind of cool to be in a community with shared with a shared experience. Like you all knit this very complicated, intense sweater, so you could talk about, oh yeah, I thought about this, and I didn't do that and I wish I'd done this and, you know. yeah I posted a picture of it recently on my Instagram and Beth who works here craftivist Graham is she still here did she go home no she went home. um at the same woolen folk that I bought my yarn she bought yarn to make the I think she was gonna make oh no maybe maybe she bought the yarn here a different yarn mm. but oh, she's, she's gonna, gonna make it also color. in more of a pastel -y color right. schema she hasn't started hers yet so she's been watching me <laughs> um you know, avidly to see how it turns out and what my process is. So I'm really loving it. It's going to definitely be um, one of my favorite sweaters. Mm -hmm. Just, it's just so different. I just love yeah. it because it's so different. Right. And you know me, I like to be different. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Okay. So that's it for my works in progress. Okay. Do you have any more? I have two more. I'll just talk briefly about what's in my lap here. Um, this is the Four Points Baby Blanket by Pearl Soho. It's a free pattern, and I'm knitting it out of linen quill, which is the yarn that they recommend. And it's for baby Julian Lewis, mm -hmm. who was born in October, who I have not met yet, but it'll probably be done by his first birthday. So this is um, turned into be, you know, car knitting. And this is in my bag that <clears throat> Patty made for me. Love it. Yeah, one of our viewers. And the only thing I'm going to mention about this is that I broke 
and I'm not sure how, but I just, in the backseat of my car, I was like, oh, the needle was broken half, broken in half. And someone mentioned that like I would replace them. So I went to their website and I downloaded the return form and I followed the directions, mailed them, I think to New Jersey, and they sent me a brand new pair of Licka needles. Oh, wow. Yeah, so anyway, just throwing it out there. And I'm pretty sure it wasn't a fault of the needle. I'm pretty sure it was, you know. Like someone knelt on the bag. Someone knelt on it or someone um, put something heavy, a case of wine or something. I don't know. So anyway, that was just a very pleasant surprise. So thank you, Licka, for my new needles. So yeah, I'm knitting it in four colors. I talked about this briefly on another um, podcast, but these are my four colors of linen quilt. The that, parents are Syracuse fans, yeah, right? They are. So it's a uh, Syracuse colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Syracuse, sophisticated, New York, yes, sophisticated Syracuse colors. So yeah, it's really Hopefully beautiful. I have it done by his first birthday. That's going to look so good in his room. Yeah. Yeah. And then this is a new kind of, <laughs> I thought this is such a funny shape, right? But it's just because this is ribbing. But this is a sock, if, in case that's not completely obvious, a toe up sock, and I'll stretch out some of the ribbing. So Andrea uh, Mowry came out with a new pattern. So she has um, a pattern called the DRK Everyday Socks, and she said it's her number one request that she rewrite the pattern for DK Weight Yarn. So she's done that. So these are the Bear Paw Socks by Andrea Mowry. I'm knitting them in Sandiscarn. Um, Sandiscarn Spot which they sell here at Pick Up Every Stitch. And I just thought this was the perfect combo. It has alpaca in it, so it's super soft. Merino and nylon. Mm -hmm. So these are those, these will be house socks, and this just reminds me that this is the front. So I did a Turkish cast-on, a two-sided cast-on, and then you make increases to form the shape of the toe. And hers is, of course, beautifully marled in two different yarns. But she also writes the pattern, so you can just use one color of yarn. So that's what I'm doing. And it's got a ribbed uh, foot. It's ribbed all the way up to the top, actually. So, yeah, this will be my, I'm almost to the heel. This will be my first toe-up heel. So if it's all ribbed, isn't that going to be bumpy? On the bottom of your on feet? On the bottom of your foot? I will let you know. Okay. <laughs> I don't plan on wearing these in shoes. Mm-hmm. And I had half a thought about not doing the ribbing on, on the, the bottom, bottom, on the mm -hmm. sole. Mm -hmm. But I decided to follow the pattern. I mean, obviously it must not be an issue if she's, you know. Now these, I just consider They're going to stretch socks. out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, house socks. So, I don't know. I'll keep you posted. I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah. But it's just something that I thought of. But this is $8.50 for 135 meters and it's this really is soft. DK. So this is actually DK sock yarn mm -hmm. that I think is just super soft and beautiful. So I love it. And of course it's blue. So yay. Yeah. Um, nice. So that's it. Yeah. I think that's it. Now I did start a project and frog it. I started the Eswas hat, which was my favorite thing from the last episode, because in our Ravelry group, I formed a new little group called Hats, Hats, Hats. So I thought it would be fun to just have everyone share their favorite hat pattern. And someone cast on the Eswas in the beautiful blue yarn, and I got immediately got envious. So I bought this at the Fiber Festival of New England, and this is I bought this for the Eswas hat. And this yarn is... Claire's Cory by Foster Sheep Farm in the color Indigo. And it's a DK weight Cory Dale Wensley Dale blend, 250 yards per skein. So, of course, I just thought this was the most beautiful color blue. I wound it into a cake. I cast on and knit about five rows, and my hands were blue. My hands were this color blue. And I have, you know, ivory bedding, and I was knitting my Zoria, and I just was like, okay, I don't know, I don't even know what to do. Like, do I just make sure I wash my hands before I touch anything? So, of course, I text my friend Claudia, I'm like, help, because she knows all about indigo dye. She loves, her, her daughter's name is indigo. So, anyway, <laughs> I figure she's the authority. Um, so... I said, I don't know what to do. And she said, you, you should probably take it off the needles and wash it. So the thing about indigo is that 
it rubs off. And just like a favorite pair of indigo jeans, jeans mm -hmm. if you sit in a car with white upholstery in your brand new jeans, you're probably going to get indigo mm -hmm. on your car seats. It's not a like a mistake. It's not a fault in the dyeing process. It's actually not even excess dye, but it's a, it's a phenomenon called crocking. So she said what was happening was called crocking and that I should wash it. So I washed it in fairly warm water with some mucolon and I, you can see, so I took the cake, I put it back on the mm -hmm. Swift mm -hmm. and wound it back into a hank. Mm -hmm. And then I tied it off with some other yarn so that I wouldn't have a big bowl of blue spaghetti. Mm -hmm. Soaked it in some eucalyptus and some pretty hot water. I swished it around. I was careful not to, you know, do anything too vigorous and let it soak for probably an hour. And then I rinsed it and I, I squeezed all the water out of it and I hung it in the boiler room of our house oh, to dry. Wow. Yeah. So I, I don't think I'm going to have any more. I mean, if I have a little bit, that's fine, but it was really turning my hands blue. So wow. yeah. So I do plan to cast on the East Wasp hat in this beautiful indigo, indigo yarn uh, by Foster Sheep Farm. Nice. So yeah. Um, so indigo takes really well on vegetable, um, on um, plant-based yarn, like hemp and silk and uh, cotton, but the, it doesn't bond as well with um, animal fiber. So that is why we're having a little bit of crocking. So. I see. Anyway, you're so smart. Yeah. Uh, I just get everything from everybody else, honestly. I you just, are so smart. I just um, do a lot of research. So since you got that at the Fiber Festival of New England, we're done with our, you know, all of our projects. So why don't we talk about our the things we bought at Fiber Festival of New England? Sure. So I'll just say we got there. We didn't really talk about the day yet. We'll just do it quickly. Um, the first booth we saw when we walked in to the left was Long Island Yarns. Mm -hmm. I didn't buy anything there because I just made that huge purchase right. at um, New York Sheep and Wool. But it was nice to say hi. And also my husband and I, one, the main reason we're going, well, we're going away Thanksgiving weekend. And we chose to go to Long Island because Long Island Farms is there and they're mm -hmm. having an open house. Now, by the time it's open house. Yes, by the time this airs, mm -hmm. it will have already happened. Mm -hmm. But my husband and I are going to go there on Sunday, the 27th of November, Fun. and go to their open house and get to see all the alpacas. So that's really exciting. Mm -hmm. um, but we didn't buy anything there. Uh, where else? Mm -hmm. What else did you? We already talked about the gnomes. Mm -hmm. We bought the gnomes. Mm -hmm. um, I did bring one. Oh. I opened the. I opened the girl. The girl. So I've started her already. So mm -hmm. this is the boy. Um, and he was still in his package. So that's the needles rattling around in there. So I'll just talk about, do you say Jagger Spun? I think so. Jagger Spun. Uh, we went to that um, little booth mm -hmm. and saw these bundles. You saw the bundles first, mm -hmm. right? And, and I forgot my bundle. You forgot your bundle. That's okay. Her bundle. She got a smaller bundle, I think. There were three different versions of these bundles of Jagger Spun Heather. It's 100% wool. And um, just look at mine. I got more of the gem tones. Mm. Aren't they beautiful? But I thought, immediately when I saw this, I thought of, what's the name of that? Mm. The sea, sea glass? glass sweater. Yeah. I have always wanted to knit this. Mm -hmm. It reminds me a bit of the Andrea Maori. Shifty? Shifty. A little bit. I mean, it's different. Mm -hmm. But um, this is... This, the sea glass is you know, created, I think, to use scrap yarn, but I don't have mm -hmm. scrap yarn. But when I saw this, I thought this would be beautiful for a, for a sea glass mm -hmm. sweater. So this yeah. is going to go at the back, at the end of my queue, behind <laughs> all the other sweaters that I already promised to make. Um, but I love this. So, again, this was from Jagger Spun Yarn. Didn't, and you bought a little... I did. I bought half as many skeins in, like, a, a white uh, or an ivory, charcoal gray, light gray... And you can take a picture of it, right, so yep. we can insert it. But one thing I did want to talk about when we were there was a really lovely um, woman who works there. Uh, her name was, is um, Susan, and her daughter Mackenzie was mm -hmm. there. And we were chatting with them, and Mackenzie's a knitter, so I asked the daughter. A lot of times, I know, I drag my daughters along, and they're not knitters, but Mackenzie actually is a knitter, so I said, what are you working on? Mm -hmm. And she pulled out this project from her bag. It's um, a pattern from the 2021 Shetland Wool Week book. It's called The Farag, F-A-I-R-A-G Cardigan. Mm -hmm. And it's so beautiful. I'll insert, I don't have a great picture of it. But I have a picture of her holding it. Okay. 
Um, and I'm going to insert it here because it was. I guess I didn't see it. You I'm weren't doing something else. Yeah, you were talking about <laughs> something else. But it's it's just beautiful. It's cable-y and lacy and oh, wow. you know really really a gorgeous mm -hmm. um, project. So I love to ask people what they're working on. So where else did you buy something? Oh, um, I actually bought spent all my money at Fox Hill Farm. So <laughs> I bought this, which is. A DK weight. This is also Morit, 100% wool. It's a little bit lighter color than my hat, you can see. Um, yeah, so I bought that. And then also at the same booth, I bought a sweater's quantity of the fingering. This is the Cormo Cross, and this is actually what I went there to buy. So I bought three skeins of this. Undyed, beautiful, bouncy. Yeah. It's lovely. Yeah. This uh, Fox Hill Farm is located in Lee, Massachusetts. So... Yep, this is this was my beeline. Mm -hmm. So, yep, I'm really pleased with it. So, yeah. <laughs> Yay, I love that. Yay. Um, and I bought one more thing. I wonder if I can fit it in really quickly. I like my little yarn babies. I went into Longmeadow Farm, their booth, and mm. these were hanging, and this was the last oh, one wow. of this colorway. I would have purchased two mm. because it's only like 525 yards. So it's not a sweater's quantity. Okay. I'm going to insert a picture, and you guys have to tell me what to make with it. She suggested a cowl. It is one of the softest things I've ever felt. And just the colorway <laughs> is so beautiful. 65% superwash merino wool, 20% cultivated silk, and 15% yak. Maybe a cowl. It's so soft. I usually don't make cowls, but, yeah, it's really beautiful. I love it so much. So I'm excited about that. So then, um, besides purchasing, there were just a couple of things that I thought were amazing. Well, this one booth that I saw, we saw, we were really done at New York Sheep and Wool. But on the way out, there was this one booth. It's a very big booth, JMR Studios. Mm. And just the way the yarn was, again, we just love it when it's hanging mm -hmm. in the open hank. Mm -hmm. And just the way it was lit really lots of bright colors. Mm -hmm. Like you gravitate toward the neutrals. <laughs> and when I see the bright colors, I just, you know, want to go touch everything. And it was at the booth where they had the long mohair, mohair mm -hmm. the very fluffy. Yes. Stain. So I, I tried to okay. take pictures. We'll see if I have any good pictures. Um, but I did talk to the owner. He was there. His name is Jan. I, let's see. His name um, is Jan Marek Ratzkowski, mm -hmm. I think. Um, but he's so nice. He's the owner, the dyer, and just uh, the booth is just amazing. So next time I go to a fiber festival and they're there, I'm going to save my yarn budget and buy something from that mm -hmm. booth. Some yarn, some yarn and some mohair, maybe matching because it's just amazing. <laughs> I just love it so much. So I did want to mention them. Oh, also, remember when we were in the Tidal Yarns booth? Mm -hmm. And um, the owner, Patricia? I think so. I think Patricia introduced us to Alexa hmm. of Link Knits. Oh, And she right. said she's an up-and-coming. She's basically yes. a relatively new knitter. Designer. Mm -hmm. and um, yeah, But she's knit. already knit really complicated mm -hmm. projects. One of her projects she knit for her mother went completely viral mm -hmm. on Twitter, of all mm -hmm. places. Hmm. And... Um, and now she's started to design. She did make modifications. It's a really, it reminds me of Andrea of um, mm -hmm. Fruity Knitting. She makes modifications on really complicated patterns mm -hmm. as a new knitter. And so then she said to herself, well, I can't really find the exact pattern that I want. So she just started designing. I mean, she's only been knitting for a few years. Yeah. And so her name is Alexa and her business is Link Knit. So mm -hmm. we'll put that in the caption. We'll mm -hmm. put that in the, in the show notes. But that was really fun. It was really fun to go to that fiber festival it was but i'm done with fiber festivals yeah. <laughs> I, I need a break it's it's yeah. been a lot it's been busy every weekend mm -hmm. something to do mm -hmm. although we're going somewhere this weekend right where isn't that this weekend where we're going to stars hollow oh we are with on saturday with um, the knitting posse yeah but that's chill yeah we're just gonna go and have lunch right you've never been to stars Hollow. no yeah it's a beautiful store and lisa is the owner and i called and let them know that we'll be coming. And, yeah. Yeah. But that will have already happened by the and time you see And that's only about an hour drive, so not too bad. Yeah. So, um, so that's that. Now we just, I guess, 
have to do our favorite things and then we're done, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, favorite things? Yeah. Okay. Me? You, go. Okay. Um, I have a couple of favorite things and I'm excited. Kim actually chose this to put in the frame. I was like, oh, did you know that's my favorite thing? So this is the Amy Slipover by Sa uh, Santa Scarn. I bought the yarn and Felicia uh, printed out the pattern for me. So I just, I couldn't stop thinking about this. It's so beautiful. Mostly because... It just seems so comfortable. It's a warm layer. It's kind of like a vest, but it's open on the sides. It's got these ties. Um, I just thought it was super elegant. Now, the pattern itself is knit in Santa Scarn Sunday in this color, which is a dark blue-gray. Dark gray-blue. And so the sample is knit in this with a black mohair, which is the tin silk mohair. Now I chose this Le Petite Silk and Mohair from Biche Bouche, and this is a really, really dark and navy. Beautiful. Yeah, so I'm excited. Mm -hmm. I'm, I love the high contrast with wearing a white blouse mm -hmm. underneath it. I think it's going to look good with my hair, which mm -hmm. is always an issue. Um, so I am really, really excited. I think this will be my next cast on after I'm done with the Zoria. So I cannot wait to wear this. Now, it's an interesting pattern because it's more of a recipe. It's not as much hand-holding, mm -hmm. and you start from the bottom up. So it's definitely a lot of knitting, and it's, um, you know, it's a DK weight mm -hmm. yarn. And, yeah, I cannot wait to cast it on. But there's no sleeves. There are no sleeves. So <laughs> it's a lot of knitting, know. but no sleeves. A lot of knitting, <laughs> but no sleeves. But these ties will be interesting. Yeah, they're ribbed. Beautiful. So, yeah, I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And I, I think that's one of my litmus tests is when I can't stop thinking about something. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's really beautiful. I, I haven't stopped thinking about it <laughs> since I saw it here, and that's why I put it on. The, it's the first sweater I put in the background today because oh, I just yeah. think it's so beautiful. So wearable. So yes. comfortable. Yeah. You can wear a, a coat, and your armpits won't be all bunched up in mm -hmm. your coat. And Yeah. I just thought it was gorgeous. So I think we, eat, we both have um, two favorite things. Do I have, I did have another, well, I don't know. My main favorite thing, though, is a designer, actually, and mm -hmm. her name is Marina Storm. Mm -hmm. uh, when we were talking mm -hmm. about our Fiber Festival, you know, our Rhinebeck um, visit, I had brought three patterns with me. I did buy yarn for two of them. I did not buy yarn for two others, and the one of them was um, Marina Storm's The Bloom, and I had shown a picture then of The Bloom, and I just thought it was really pretty. Marina does it in um, a yarn with, um, I, don't, I don't know what you call it, speckled. I never know the color, the different colored yarns, mm -hmm. what to call hand dyed, obviously, with yeah. some color in it. And um, I don't know if I want to do that. I haven't really found the perfect yarn to knit the bloom. She has another sweater called Faena, P-H-A-E-N-N-A, -N -N -A, and she mm -hmm. has an adult version and a child version. She has a cute picture. I also put this in that video, our Rhinebeck video, with her and her daughter. She has a new pattern that she just finished. It's Intarja. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but it's a shawl, and she named it Encanto. Which means enchanted. It does. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I, I don't I think, think so. <laughs> I don't think she named it after that movie. But right. um, Marina is just adorable. I've never met her, but we've we've really started connecting on Instagram, mm -hmm. and she just has such a beautiful, vibrant spirit about her. I mean, it comes through in her pictures. Mm -hmm. Uh, she's the model for most of her sweater pictures, I'm pretty sure. And uh, she was at Barcelona Knits, and she, um, she, you know, went to the Mayak booth. And they're going to knit a sample of Encanto mm. out of Mayak and hopefully have it ready for um, Vogue Knitting Live mm -hmm. in New York in February. Mm -hmm. But it's really a beautiful shawl. And, and um, Marina's a new designer. She only mm -hmm. has 21 designs. Mm -hmm. So I love, you know, sometimes we talk about really established designers mm -hmm. and it's just nice to talk about new designers. And she's from Greece originally. And I think she lives in Spain now. Pretty sure. She's a mom. She has two little kids and she just is a lovely person. And um, I did tell her I was going to share about Encanto today. And uh, I think actually I'm going to knit one for my mom. Mm. I really want to. Uh, it kind of, to me, it reminds me of a butterfly. Mm. And I, my mom just loves butterflies, nature. Mm. So I might knit one for my mother. But when I told Marina we were going to talk about it, she offered a free pattern for our mm. viewers. 
So, um, not every viewer, it's going to be a little contest. So, if you find Marina Storm on Ravelry, well, you can find her. We'll put it in the show notes. And then, obviously, follow her. Follow her. I think it's Storm Knitting Art on Instagram. But if you find, if you go to the Encanto pattern, like it or favorite it, whatever it's called, and comment on it. And in the comment, say, um, knit, besides whatever else you want to say, right. say uh, Kim and John a giveaway. Mm -hmm. And then she is going to, the Friday after this airs, this is going to air, I think, on Friday, December 2nd. So a week later on Friday, December 9th, the giveaway entry will end, and then she'll choose a winner from those who commented on the Encanto um, pattern. And then, just so you know, you can, then whoever wins gets a free, any of her free, any of her patterns for free. One of any pattern. You don't have to get the Encanto. Mm -hmm. She has cute socks. She has a really cute little tank top, mm -hmm. like a summery thing. Um, and some sweaters, a whole bunch of different things. But um, yeah, so let's support new designers and mm -hmm. go look up Marina Storm and uh, tell her hi from us. <laughs> so that's my favorite thing. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, I have one other favorite thing, which is I follow Sydney Craybaugh on Instagram. I think she's Sydney Craybaugh. She's, I, I, I think of her as Squidney because she has like Squidney's school of vintage knitting mm -hmm. but she has a class that is part of the floxies enchanted fairy tale forest virtual event and her class is this knitted pinecone pocket with all these baubles on it and i just thought i just love knitting you know completely Little decorative objects. useless <laughs> objects so <laughs> uh, yeah that caught my eye so i did sign up for that is a virtual event on November 17th and 18th, which it will already happened when, you know, by the time this video airs, but I am taking the, the pinecone pocket class that I paid for, but as part of these virtual events, there's all these extras. So I am going to definitely tune in for the honey cake, uh, honey cake baking demo with Shamika Clark and make a magical crochet flower crown with Shevas. Oh, wow. And I hear the um, Kevin and Ray talk about Chevis all the time. So that's at Chevy Rel, C H E V Y R E L L on Instagram. Oh wow! Yeah, so that sounds fun. Floxy is, is who's putting that on, and I don't know why that didn't end up in my notes and ended up in yours. But there you go. <laughs> it's okay. We're still trying to figure out the best way to write our notes, right? Right. Now, I like my notes is different how Jonna likes her notes, but we also like to see what each other are going to talk about. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it helps me with editing if I have all of Jonna's things on here. But anyway, you don't need to hear all this, this detail. But. I think that's it. There was one other sweater that isn't officially my favorite thing, but I'm gaga over the drawing sweater. Mm. Who's the designer? Who isn't gaga over the drawing sweater? With the flowers mm. and the fade. Mm -hmm. Oh, I want to knit that. But I'm not going to buy the pattern, and I'm not going to buy any yarn beautiful. until I finish <laughs> knitting all my other sweaters. But look up. I guess I'll insert a picture here of the drawing sweater. It's just... <laughs> oh, is so beautiful. Yeah. More intarsia. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I guess I'm going to be on an intarsia roll. But yeah, that's basically it. I did want to say one thing. We had a, a uh, we get comments on YouTube, we get comments on Instagram, we get comments, um, you know, various places. But Yessie Designs, I don't know her first name, I think. She commented that she loves our podcast because, um, you know, children can watch it. We don't, you know, say anything sketchy, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so she, her daughter loves to listen to us and listen to what we're talking about and see our projects. So I did, I asked what her daughter's name is. So her daughter is Anna Isabella. So hi, hi. Anna Isabella. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. Yeah. Um, but I think that's it, right? Yeah. I was just going to mention a book. Go for I it. I started a book, mm -hmm. a new book. So I'm listening to A Gentleman in Moscow on audiobooks. So I listened to that in the car. So I have not given up. and But I did start a new book that's actually um, on my Kindle. So I'm reading it. It's called Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. I think that's how you spell it. G-A-R-M-U-S. Lessons in Chemistry. And it's an interesting book. It has an interesting premise. It's definitely on the light and fluffy so far. I'm only a little bit into it. But if you have ever been scrambling eggs 
and thought about how protein denatures and doesn't stick to the pan and why pans need to be hot. And if you've ever explained this to your children or your husband, which I've done a, a lots of times, this book is up your alley. So anyway, I love food chemistry. There's a great book by Harold McGee called On Food and Cooking. And it is, it's basically a chemistry book, but and so no recipes, but it's all about how uh, food behaves chemically. So yeah, anyway. Great book. I'm really enjoying it. Now, I don't say that to intimidate anybody because it's definitely on the light and fluffy side. So, I, and I think it's, it might be even on the, a love story. So, hmm, I wonder if I would like that. Yeah. I'm now remembering when I I loved math in school and in college, and I took this um, calculus course where the teacher recommended. I think the the book was called A Tour of the Calculus, hmm. and it's written more like a it's not. Hmm written like a dry calculus book. It's more like the beauty of calculus. Mm -hmm. And I remember starting, I didn't finish reading it, but I remember starting to read that and just loving mm -hmm. it. Yeah. It was really interesting. So I probably have it at home. I can loan it to you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you are just definitely so smart. <laughs> I, I only say that to, it's kind of a niche thing, you know? Well, thank you so much for watching. Thank you. And um, this will air, as I said, the first um, Friday in December and I think then our middle of December video will be our ask us anything video right do you okay. think I'm yeah. so excited there's lots of food questions yeah yeah great great questions like better than I could have ever <laughs> imagined um, viewers are so creative and so thoughtful you can tell that people put a lot of thought into asking these questions mm -hmm. so yeah I'm really looking forward to um, making that video oh yeah that'll be really fun yeah so um we don't forget eat, we should eat cookies and drink yes i'll make um i'll make mulled cider can you make glug i can make glug glug i have a recipe i, I bought, i'm saying it wrong i bought apple cider i can make mulled wine yes mulled wine isn't that okay. what it's called glug yeah and so it's half apple cider and half wine so okay. we won't get too tipsy um we can get tipsy <laughs> yeah but i'm excited <laughs> so be that'll yeah. be fun maybe we'll have a fire in the fireplace maybe nice. we'll do it downstairs nice that'll be fun yeah it'll be a slow your knitting Christmas tree. bring your knitting and, yeah yeah so anyway like subscribe comment we love your comments and um we just thank you so much for watching thank you yep. Bye. i forgot my felted heart we bring our own heat <laughs> i wish we were funny yeah i wish we were funny but we're not at all we're two hot grandmas <laughs> it's so good to sit next to you i never see you <laughs> We can't tell you how many times we have filmed 20 minutes and yeah. the camera wasn't even on. And then it's hard to remember what we said and what we didn't say. And so then we go back and we don't really. Last time we did that, I actually edited it together. Because the first time we talked about things, it's just more genuine. You know what I mean? Don't you dare eat my gnome <laughs> or a pom pom or my hat. <laughs>